Hey guys, I'm going to show you something really cool today. I'm going to show you how to create a vector image using Google Drawing, which is totally free and accessible to everyone. So first tip is make sure you're using a computer mouse. It'll really help you with this. Uh, what this can look like when you're finished is my profile picture that you see on YouTube and Google Drive. So how you start is you go into Google Drive and you're going to click on new. Then when you go down to more, you can see that you can go, go to Google Drawings. All right, now really quick, just so you understand what we're making, we're making a vector image which can look smooth like this instead of a pixelated computer graphic. So um, the most popular uh, thing to use for vector images is Adobe Illustrator, but that's not free. And Google Drawing is free, so we're using Google Drawing. Okay, so um, vector images uses, they use math like uh, lines and shapes and polygons and curves and stuff like that instead of these individual squares. All right, now that we understand that. So to get started, we have our untitled drawing. Let's just title this really quick so that we can find it later if we need to. So I'm doing T Swifty. So we'll just write T Swift there. And I've already found a picture of Miss Taylor on the internet. So I'm going to right click, copy that image. And now I'm going to right click and paste it onto my canvas. This here, this with the little squares is my canvas this here. Okay, we can crop this and to crop, you can just left click twice. And uh, after that, you'll see uh, some black little edges, this is going to allow you to crop the image. So I'm going to just make it squared, double left click again, bring it to my left hand corner of the canvas, and I'm going to drag it out to make this fill the entire thing. Okay, now to change the size of my canvas, since the square is smaller than the canvas here, I'm double left clicking on the left hand or the right hand bottom corner. And I'm going to drag that in so that the canvas size is now the same size as my picture. Okay, last thing to do to get set up is I'm going to copy this so that, that I have two tailors that are exactly the same size. So right click, copy, right click, paste. Okay, move my copy out. I'm just going to reposition this bar here. And now I have two identical images. The right side is my canvas. The left side is what I'm going to use to trace. So we're going to be doing a lot of tracing for this. And we're going to be looking for different values or colors. Okay, so I'm going to go to insert line polyline. This is the tool we're going to use for everything. And we're going to really be just doing a lot of tracing of shapes. So the first thing I think is easiest to do is just to outline the entire person. So I'm going to start on this area here and I'm just left clicking. Every time you left click, you are basically leaving a movable point that can be adjusted later. Okay, so if you make a mistake, it can it can be adjusted. So I'm just moving along click, click, click. And I'm clicking along the outline. Okay, there we have it. All right, now select and we're going to move this over and place it right on top of Taylor. Now if we need to make any adjustments, just so you know, double left click and you see you have all these little purple dots, these purple dots are showing you where you clicked, and you can adjust them. So if you made any mistakes, this is what you know, that would be how you could fix those. Okay, now back over here, I'm going to now insert and now so you go to insert polyline like this, or now that you've done it once it's up there. So I could just click that little polyline icon. Now I'm going to trace over just her hair. Okay, so we're gonna use that other other one that's kind of like the background. So this is gonna be just her hair. Now, you could do her hair and her face together and then put the face on top. It is easiest to work kind of back to front, or large to small, you could think of it. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, well, I've got talking. See, this is what happens if I get talking. So we're doing kind of her face and her, and her hair together, I guess that's fine. Um, anyway, so working large to small or back to front, I think is helpful. Okay, so there's her hair and her face. Now we can change the color of this. Let's make this blue. Nah, let's make this, make this green. That'll be fun. Okay, I'm going to slide this over. Let's change the color of 
the rest of her now too while we're at it. Let's, instead of light blue, let's make this magenta. Cool. Okay, and let's do a little fixing. So um, I double left clicked, and now I'm going to fix up her hair a little bit. Okay, next up we're gonna do the face. And this time I won't mess it up. Maybe I, I'll just talk a little less. Okay, so back to my polyline tool. And over here, I'm just going to now trace over just where her skin is making lots of little left clicks on my mouse. You can see why you really need a mouse for this, right? Can you imagine doing this without a mouse? That'd be really hard. Okay, here we go. And boom. Okay, let's make this a different color now. I'm gonna go with blue, okay? Select, so that's my arrow, and move it over. Now you might be starting to wonder why do we have this original image here? So just so that you know, this eventually, this this purple like background that we're putting this on top of, it can be cut completely. So it's gonna be removed when we're all finished. But until then, it's good to have it there for positioning of things. So watch this, I'm gonna do the lips next. So I hit my polyline and now I'm tracing her lips. And I'm going to use that original image to really help me place these. First, let me change those. Let's do bright red. Okay, um, so select. I'm going to select on that, the what is now in the background, her actual photograph, and I'm going to reorder. So go to order, and click bring to front. Now we see her in the front. Okay, select. And I'm going to pull these lips right over to where her lips are. You can see how I can like position that. Okay. And when I let go, it disappears because it, it has her photograph in the front, but I'm just going to left click on that again, then right click and order. I'm going to now send it to the back and her lips are exactly in the right place because I put it where they were in the photograph. Okay. So we do the same thing for the eyes and the eyebrows and all of that. Um, one more thing I want to make sure I show you in this video, though, is just how you can look for values. So we're going to do some highlights. I want to just, I would just want to trace over all of the highlights on her face. Those are all the lightest areas. So, you know, her skin right now is blue, but we don't want it to all be the same value of blue. Whatever color you make your person's skin, you know, you want to definitely to show dimension and form in the face, you wanna show different values. And we could get very detailed in this and specific, and that's what I did in, in my picture of myself is I really looked for multiple different values. But right now we're just gonna focus on a few. So I've highlighted these, these four parts here. I'm going to change the color. So we were using the dark blue, I believe, for her face before, so let's, lighten this up a bit. We'll use, let's use this color of blue. Okay. And by the, oh, oopsies. So if that ever happens, just hit select and it'll go away. Um, as we're doing this, I want you to see too, right now, everything oops, is outlined. You can change that, hit border color and go to transparent. If you don't want that black line around everything, you could do that later if you want, or you could do it now. Um, you can also hold control and then click all of these and then go to fill color and you can fill them all at the same time. It should work, whatever color you want. And you can also then take all the borders off. Oops, that one just didn't get in there. There we go. Okay, let's drag all these over. I'm gonna try to do them all together. I don't know if I can, but I'm hitting control. Is that gonna work? Nope, that's not gonna work. Well, we tried. Okay, we'll do one at a time. Now, if you can do it without using the original picture, more power to you. I mean, try to just using your eyes and looking, but if that is something that you're unable to do, then you can bring your original picture back up and you can really place everything where it needs to go and then send that original picture back on to the back where it belongs. Okay, so I'm approaching my limit of my free screen uh, screen casting from Screencastify. So I'm going to have to say goodbye for now, but I hope that this helped teach you how to get started on a Google vector drawing.